basically there's three kinds of parking brake boots that you can have to cover this big hole in your floorboard of your Brickland. The first one is the original style. It's made out of rubber and it doesn't last long. The next one that came out was a high heat latex made out of latex mass material. It lasts for about five years. But we've come up with a steel version that the parking brake sits in. It reflects heat because it's steel and it seals the hole. So here's how it works. The parking brake fits neatly into the steel boot. And it operates like this. No interference, no problems with adjustment. So how big does that hole get? A lot of hot air can get through that. Okay, so the first thing you have to do to fix this problem is take off the console. The best way to do that, pull the parking brake all the way up, unscrew it of course, and then you pry this apart gently. If you don't, and this one's already had it happen, it will crack. Now, next step. Lubricate the parking brake adjuster screw. Then, find out if it'll turn loose with a wrench. This one's really bad. This car was a barn find. But you have to do it by hand until you can get a deep socket on there. A ratchet wrench is a great tool to have in this situation. Then you want to see if you can get a deep socket on there. Nope, not yet. Got a ways to go. Let's try that again. There we go. And we dropped the nut, but it'll be underneath the car. Next step, over top we can see there's a bolt here and a bolt here. These need to be removed. And at that point, parking brake assembly comes out. If you notice, everything hit the floor. There's supposed to be two wire ties holding the equalizer bar onto the front cable. And this is the equalizer with the wire ties. Next, we have to take the plate out that's the remnants of the old look at this stuff that's great stuff the old uh, parking brake boot you've got two choices you can use a drill with a step drill which is my personal favorite for removing rivets and uh, you can also use a 3 16 drill which is what the rivet size is now if there's a uh, nail in the rivet you have to punch it out. These three do not have the nail, so use a small punch to get them out, or you could go find a finished nail. Use light pressure to walk it around till the head falls off. Say everything's loose. This should come off at this point. Oop, it doesn't. We're gonna have to knock it loose. Stuck to the car like this one. Get a mallet and a screwdriver. Pop it loose. This is how big the hole is. I can stick my whole hand in it. This area here isn't the same size as the metal plate that reinforces this that has the uh, nut welded nut inserts now the rivets also hooked to the steel plate it I'm pretty sure that when they put these cars together somebody cut the hole in the fiberglass on one part of the assembly line and somebody cut the hole in the piece of metal reinforcement on another part of the assembly line this could cause some problems when you put your steel parking brake boot in and I'll show you how to deal with that the first thing we want to do is get rid of the uh, 
rivets, the remnants of the rivets. And I'm gonna go ahead and put the drill bit in. Wow, they take off on you. Whoop, that one came back. All right, now we're gonna take the Big H parking brake kit, which has a bag of parts attached with the wire tie. Cut the wire tie, throw it away, open the bag, and you should have a little rubber boot, a washer, and three special rivets that hold the parking brake boot down. Now, first step here is to find out if this even fits the hole. This one almost does. So we have to do a little trimming because they, these two pieces are not fitting in the same square. So now we have to get a saw, a file, trim that metal piece to match the same size as the fiberglass piece. We're going to use an air saw, what I use here. Cut along the line of the fiberglass. Wear hearing protection. I like to cut little lines so that when you make your curve, each chunk flies out. Okay, we're done cutting the hole out. Wish those guys on the assembly line would have put that together a little nicer. Now, at that point, test the fit. And the way to really check to make sure you've got it in the right place, uh, you can put the rivets in, but I would highly recommend putting the bolts back in because the rivet holes may not quite line up with where they should be. We found differences in where the rivet holes are. Now, both bolts are in. Can you put all three rivets in? Yes, we can. Looks like we did a pretty good job on that one. Now, uh, at this point, we're almost ready to assemble this, not quite. We have to hook up the uh, equalizer and stick the bar through the hole right here before we rivet it down. It just makes it a lot easier. We're gonna put this rod in. This has a flat side on it right here. This flat side goes towards the parking brake. That means that this has to go underneath that hole in the equalizer. Not this way, it goes in the other way. There we go. It goes in like so. So that is the correct position for that. It's a little hard to see. So you hold it up. Pull back. <laughs> and you put our parking brake assembly over it. It comes through the hole. And you set it on top. And it's not going to go anywhere at this point. Now, we're going to line it up with these two bolts once again. Put the rivets in. Now, at this point, I'm going to rivet the rivets, but before I do that, I want to compress the gasket. That is an airtight gasket. Now we're going to get my rivet gun right here. When you rivet these in, you want to push down as hard as you can and get it started. You want to start each one. Squeeze it, squeeze it. These are pretty tight rivets. <laughs> now there is an alternative here. You can get a block of wood and push down on the rivet gun with your weight. And I don't, and hold your hands open so you don't bash your knuckles.
there we go. This one didn't come out all the way. There we go. Okay, rivets are in. Now in the kit over here, we had a little rubber boot and a washer. I've put the rubber boot over the shaft and put the washer on top of it to protect the boot from the parking brake. When the parking brake moves back, it compresses the boot. So now, let's take these bolts back out. Whoop. Let me put this up over here. Slide this into the parking brake mechanism. There we go. Put the bolts in. Snug them down, then torque it. There we go. Parking brake should be free moving. Now at this point, I'm going to raise it up a little to get this to come up higher than the plate. Okay. Now we're going to put two nuts on. One is the adjuster and one is a lock nut. I'm using new nuts here. Run that down as far as you can get it with the uh, socket. But what we're going to have to do first is tighten this down. Now we're going to bring it up high. We got a ways to go here. You want to get it at least where it was before, and then you're going to check the adjustment. This nut here is a lock nut, and that's it. That is too loose. So we have to tighten it down some more. Okay, that's tightening up. Whew. There we go. Always push the button before you release it. Now the only wrench we can use to tighten this up with is a normal box wrench that's nice and small. Okay, that's about where you want it to land, right there. Now we put the lock nut down. Okay, so now we just snug the lock nut onto the other nut. And we have our parking brake boot. No more burn your arm or put hot air in an air conditioned car. Permanent solution at BigHBrickland.com. Order yours today. Thank you.